has caught over 810 pound plus largemouth bass, holder of 13 worldwide patents, and inventor of the Weedless Trolling Motor Prop. Doug Hannon is the Bass Professor. It was Shakespeare who asked, what's in a name? And in the case of a largemouth bass, the answer he'd have gotten is, not much. The bass is not even a member of the bass family, but rather a sunfish that includes fish like the bluegill and other small panfish. But it was common in old times for people to name a fish after a popular game fish. And usually the criterion was the head and the mouth resemblance. And the striped bass is probably the origin of the name for the largemouth bass. In the South, bass up until the late 50s became known simply as green trout because of their affinity to small streams and rivers, which up north would have been trout streams. It is this very versatility that causes confusion of the name that makes the fish so much fun to pursue and catch and America's most popular sport fish. Oh, baby. Because bass can be found in virtually any type of water, we are basically free to pick our favorite kind of water to fish when fishing for bass. Among my favorites has to be rivers and streams. And there's a good reason for that. For one, the water tends to be more interesting with various twists and turns and great variations in current. And the current tends to predict where bass will be because they tend to lie outside of current break areas. Reading current then becomes as important for the angler as it is for the bass. When bass are in the move in a river, they tend to follow the edges and the bottom of the channel, like this one here. So no matter what you choose to call them, be it green trout, bass, or even old big mouth, learning the rules of the road for the type of water you fish is the important thing in catching bass. If you've enjoyed today's edition as much as I have being here for you, then don't forget, click on that button and send this to a friend. <laughs>